Oh man, the last time we reviewed an affordable Denon receiver, it did not go well. Didn't go well for Denon, and it didn't go well for us. But as the saying goes, time heals all wounds, and today we have a new affordable Denon receiver. So, let's see if history is going to repeat itself with the new X1700H. <laughs> The X1700H is a 7.2 channel Dolby Atmos and DTSX compatible home theater receiver that produces 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms in stereo, with power likely dropping to around 50 watts when driving multiple channels. Denon does not specify the receiver's official power ratings for all channels driven, so depending on your speakers, your mileage may vary. Around back, you're going to find six HDMI inputs, three of which are spec to receive signals up to 8K60. The receiver can even scale legacy signals like HD and 4K up to 8K, depending on your settings. Of course, the Denon has ARC, EARC support through its single HDMI monitor out, and it supports Dolby Vision, HDR10+, dynamic HDR, and HLG signals, and it's no doubt going to be a hit with gamers because it has support for ALLM and VRR. For a full breakdown of all of the features, specs, including its wireless and streaming music support, please check out our links in the description. Setup is pretty straightforward, but I gotta say, coming off our Cinema 50 and X3800H reviews, I really missed the updated UI. So no trickle down here as the 1700H is still rocking the Denon's old user interface. The menus are functional and give users all of the necessary controls that you're going to need, but visually, they look like they've been stripped from an old Game Boy rather than a piece of text circa this century. Regardless, setup is pretty painless, and if you use the on-screen guide and Odyssey Auto Room calibration, you should be up and running in about 30 minutes. But getting to our test subject, we use the 1700H with speakers ranging from ultra-affordable to cost-no-object. Now, obviously, one isn't likely to use a sub-$700 receiver with a pair of $8,000 speakers like the Bowers & Wilkins 805D4s, but we did just that to see how well the Denon handled difficult-to-drive speakers. The Denon will technically power a speaker like the BMW, though I don't recommend it. Turning up the volume caused noticeable distortion, not to mention the receiver heated up considerably. A better match would include speakers with an impedance of 6 ohms or higher, or ones with a bit less impedance fluctuation. In our testing, speakers like the Polk XT60, Klipsch R50M, and the JBL Stage 190s were all better suited for the Denon. For more demanding speakers like BMW, Focal, or even Polk's own reference line, I would suggest shopping a little bit more upmarket. Connected to our Sony X95K TV, as well as our Apple TV 4K and Sony PS5, I ran our speakers through the X1700's Odyssey procedure, as well as carried out a full manual setup, saving each to its own sound profile, which is a nice feature and a great way to A-B what software like Odyssey does to the sound of your speakers versus when it's not engaged. You probably already know that I'm not Odyssey's biggest fan, but know that it does work, and for those of you with untreated or typical living spaces or mix matched loudspeakers, Odyssey can be a godsend. However, for the rest of this review, I will be describing the performance of the Denon without Odyssey engaged. Getting right to it, I am not going to go so far as to say the Denon has no sound or is neutral because it's not. The Denon has a fun, punchy sound, one that gives the listener a sense of a more bass energy or weight, though it's not overbearing or uncontrolled, and no, I'm not describing its bass performance when using a subwoofer. The X1700H definitely sounds more confident and sure-footed down low compared to the vague, mushy mess that was the S960H we reviewed two years ago. This receiver's bass actually has more in common with the costlier X3800H than anything from Denon's cheaper S-Line, which is a very, very good thing. Obviously, if you use smaller bookshelf speakers or speakers that need to be crossed over higher than, say, 50 or 60 hertz, which is kind of the case with most budget speakers, the bass is going to be routed to your subwoofer and will no longer be the Denon's responsibility. When focusing my attention on dialogue through either our Klipsch or Bowers & Wilkins center speaker, I found the Denon's mid-range intelligibility to be pretty solid. I would classify the Denon's mid-range as neutral leaning, though with respect to dialogue, it does seem to be just a little bit softer around the edges with respect to focus. Now, this didn't outright hurt intelligibility for me. Nevertheless, if you need more detail from your center, you can always turn the center channel up or engage one of the many dialogue enhancement features, both of which work very, very well. 
As for mid-range leaning instruments, when listening in stereo, the X1700H isn't going to do anything to color the sound, but no, I wouldn't say that it's on par with better receivers or a good integrated like the Marantz Model 40N in terms of its sense of dimension. As for the highs, I think they're pretty good, but I am stopping short of greatness because at higher volumes or with less than stellar recordings or movies, the X1700H can thin up top and even sound a little bit brittle. At higher volumes, I sensed more noise or grain up top than I did through more expensive receivers. When watching in the climactic dogfight of Top Gun Maverick, missile launches, machine gun fire, and jet engine boosts all had just a bit of added compression or distortion when listening at volumes in excess of 90 to say 95 dB. At more normal or slightly above normal volumes, the Denon didn't disappoint, but if you insist on taking things to 11, the Denon will lose some of its composure. When it comes to soundstage and when listening in stereo, the Denon seems to prioritize width over depth and with respect to separation and focus, things are a bit more generalized. I don't think the Denon is bad for two channel listening, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it is the best that I've heard. If you can up your budget slightly, I think you're going to enjoy better two channel performance with the Pioneer 105 or better still, the 305. As for the Denon surround sound performance, so long as you're content with 7.2 channels, I thought the 1700H was pretty great. I listened to the Denon in both a 7.1 and 5.1.2 configuration, ultimately preferring the latter, and even upscaling stereo or older Dolby signals to faux Atmos was effective and even impressive. Dynamically, so long as you connect the Denon to speakers with higher sensitivities, think 88 dB or higher, and also who have an impedance greater than 6 ohms, I doubt you're going to be disappointed. More difficult to drive speakers will expose some of the Denon shortcomings, so just double check your speaker specs if lightning quick or earth shattering dynamics are what you're after. As far as comparisons go, let's take a look at the Pioneer LX105 and 305, Yamaha's V6A, and perhaps costlier options from Denon like their own X2800H. Now, I have not heard the Pioneer LX105, but we did review the 305 and we were very impressed with it. While the Pioneer 305 is more expensive than the Denon here, I think the added investment in the 305 gets you a demonstrably better receiver. One that has more channels, more power, and Dirac built in, something the Denon is never going to have. But if you can't stretch your budget, the Pioneer 105 may be worth a look before deciding between it and the Denon. As for the Yamaha V6A, it's a good receiver and was once even our budget reference, but that receiver is getting a little bit long in the tooth. The Yamaha sound, it's a little leaner, more agile with a greater sense of detail, but I think I'd go with the newer Denon here. The X1700H features newer internal hardware with respect to its video board, so it's less likely to have issues with next-gen video features such as 4K 120 or 8K 60 signals. In our testing, the Denon had zero issues playing back games at 4K 120 in HDR through our PS5, whereas our old V6A always had issues. While I have not heard the Denon X2800H, we did review the X3800H. On paper, the 1700H and the 2800H are somewhat comparable, so I feel confident that should you have the money to jump up to the X2800H, the added investment will be worth it. The 2800 brings more power to the table, broader next-gen video capability, as well as preamp outs for a separate stereo amplifier should you want to play with a third-party amp down the road. I don't know if the 2800 will sound night and day different, but I suspect it will have an easier time powering more difficult-to-drive loudspeakers. So in the end, I'm just happy that this isn't another Denon S960H. No, no, no. Denon's newer X1700H is a budget Denon receiver that I can finally get behind. It's no giant killer. I mean, it's not going to best receivers that cost twice as much, but for just under 700 bucks, it gives customers a solid place to start their home theater journey with a receiver that has a lot of what they really need without overpaying for features, specs, or channels they're never going to use. So that's it. That is now my take on Denon's newish X1700H 7.2 channel AV receiver. But now I'm curious what you thought of it. Okay. Well, before we get into that, okay, I have some. I have an important update. Uh oh. Uh, with regards to Dirac, oh, and the upgrades and the oh. release dates and all that stuff. Okay. Breaking I, news. Yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> I finally heard back uh, from Sound United. Okay. Um. All right. Regarding the release date, and this is a direct quote, mm -hmm. at this point, we can only confirm 
that Denon and Marantz will support direct live room correction, limited and full bandwidth versions after the firmware update in March of 2023. Okay. We also plan to support Dirac Live base control, although the integration efforts have not yet started and we do not have a firm launch time. Hmm. With respect to, yeah, yeah, hmm. I have a feeling you're going to have some feelings about this. Okay. Hmm. With respect to cost. Okay. <laughs> are we going to have to go back and redo all of our reviews? <laughs> no, no, but I have some thoughts. You have feelings. Yeah, okay. feelings. So with respect to cost. Mm hmm Dirac Live Room Correction will be an optional upgrade. A okay. license key for the limited version will cost $259, mm -hmm. and the full bandwidth version will cost $349. Mm -hmm. It will be possible to upgrade from the limited to the full bandwidth version at a later stage with an additional cost of $99. Okay. All right. Um, well, is that it? Is that it? Everything? That's, yeah, that's the end of my breaking news story. Okay. With respect to Dirac. Uh, I do want to stress that we are talking about the X1700H in this review. And to the best of my knowledge, it will never support Dirac. So this is breaking news for those of you that may have seen our other Denon receiver review or the Morant Cinema 50 review that we did. Um, so and I you've been waiting to And hear. have been waiting for updates. I just don't want you to be confused and go out and maybe get the 1700H, wait until March, and then go, where's my Dirac? That's not what we're talking about. Um, about the news, we always knew it was coming later. We said that in our review. We did not speculate on the cost. There were rumors out there about the cost. Uh, I know several of you have left those comments in the Cinema 50 and Denon reviews. It didn't stop anybody else um, from speculating. And it didn't <laughs> stop anyone else from speculating. So now we know the costs. Um, to me, and this is just my opinion, uh, those costs seem a little high. Um, I'm accustomed to having to pay for Dirac. Um, it's typically $99. I think the most I've ever seen it is $199. So uh, 249 three, or 250 to 350 respectively, give or take a couple of bucks. Two, yeah, 259 and, and 349 Yeah. Um, seems a little high. Seems a little uh, super premium. Um, <laughs> especially given the fact that the Marantz uh, receivers already kind of command a little bit of a higher price. Uh, the fact that uh, the the Dirac base uh, package has not even begun its kind of development or integration into the receivers, I think, is a huge uh, bomb drop um, because I know that that's something other outlets and enthusiasts and you guys uh, down in the comments have been talking up. So to learn that it's not even a March thing, it could be a you know a, a who way, knows when who knows when is and for the for the record yeah Andrew is learning of this for the first time yeah this was a conversation that Christy took to have uh, by herself um, so <laughs> well I just found out yeah I know I know I, mean, I know and I'm not I'm not upset about it but um, if those of you that just heard Christy's news are reacting like me join me <laughs> join me won't you. Um, yeah, I, oh. look, I still would encourage people to check out both the Denon and the Marantz. I think they're both great and they definitely stand on their own, um, as they sit right now. And I, I meant everything that I said in, in those reviews, but, you have but to boy, you just, you, I mean, you just put a whole other pair of concrete shoes on the RZ 50 in terms of it is planted in the value department. Yeah. Bringing it back to the X1700H. Sure, sure. Let's let's get back which to is, that. Which is only twice the cost of a Dirac update. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What do you so, think of this receiver? What do I think? Overall, I think that this is a good receiver. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Denon sound. Okay. And it, that's just that just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't hold it against me. <laughs> I don't need you to, you know, support me in that effort. I mean, it's just, it's just it's a just personal, yeah. out of all the Sound United brands, yeah. my, my personal tastes do lean towards Marantz. Okay. 
but if my budget was limited and I was dead set on getting either something from Denon, you know, or something from Sound United, I, mm-hmm. I, I would get this one until at least until I had the finances to go elsewhere. Yeah. Now, as for alternatives, mm-hmm. um, for me, the thing that is impossible to ignore is Onkyo. Okay. And you've, you've sort of alluded to the RZ50, but yeah. that's a significantly more expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> $1,000 more. Um, one option you might look at is the Onkyo 5100. Oh, yes. How did you miss that? Anyway, yeah. I'm here to save you, Andrew. <laughs> it is $599 it for is. a 7.2 channel. Mm-hmm. It has 80 watts, which is the same, same as what yeah. you find in whatever this Denon number is yeah. that we're talking about. The binding posts, though, they are Oh, that's right. It had those push pin garbage. They're stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah. So if you are on an extra tight budget and you mm-hmm. can look past the push pins, this is a really good option. It is. Although this is the one that I'm actually more surprised you didn't bring up. So if you can wait and save, okay. you know, o- over the 5,100, I would get the Onkyo 6,100. It mm. is $799. It's 7.2 channels. Okay. You get 100 watts. Okay. It supports 8K60, 4K120. Yep. The HDMI uh, ports are 2.1. Mm-hmm. It has VRR and ALLM for Just gaming. Like the Denon. It's only $100 more than the Denon. Right. So for me, it's the one I would pick because I just personally prefer Onkyo Sound. Um, the 6100, I th- at $100 more, no, it doesn't have Dirac, but it does have Auto Room EQ. It's not Odyssey, it is Accu something or other that, that Onkyo has. That's also very good. Um, but you would have to step up to the 7100, I think, um, to get Dirac, in which case I think that's a $1,200 unit. Um, uh, the 7100? Yeah. I think it's, yeah, $1,299. $1,299, $1,300. So it is, it is a little bit more, and that puts you in the same league as like the costlier Denons I talked about or the uh, Pioneer 305. So it really comes down to if you were at the sub-$1,000 level, um, I'm kind of leaning more X1700H personally. I would spend a little bit more for it over the 5100 because I do believe the build quality of the Denon is better. If you're able to jump up to like that 12 to $1,300 price point, I'm still Camp Pioneer or I guess it would be the Onkyo 7100 over Denon in this instance. And then of course, if you can go up even further, the RZ50 is still just the king of just value for money. Um, and then at the $2,500 $2, level, then you've, you're getting into like the Cinema 50 and stuff. All right, guys, that is now our review of the Denon X1700H AV receiver. What did you guys think? Let us know it down in the comments below. Oh, the question of the day has to be, uh, what do you think about Christie's breaking news? Yeah, the question of the day <laughs> is... Sound off on the breaking news about Dirac for Denon and Morant's products coming in March. Let us know. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we both do here. And we thank you very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again for helping us to reach 300,000 subscribers. I think we're at 301,000 at this point. Uh, So thank you very much for that. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye.